Okay, today we're going to tackle rebuilding a hydraulic cylinder on the loader of the old John Deere 410 loader backhoe. I rebuilt the cylinders on the outrigger probably two years ago, and it did not go well, so I'm hoping this goes a little bit smoother, and uh, hopefully we can get down here. And before we get started, don't forget to subscribe, like, comment down below. See if I can do this without smashing my fingers. That's always my goal for anything I work on. Okay, we got the uh, cylinder held up here with the forks and the mobility. And I went ahead and got a strap tied around here. So I should be able to uh, let it down and it should be secure. And now I believe I can go ahead, pull this nut here off the end, and start taking the port. Well, okay, I guess we're seeing how easy this comes off here. You're supposed to have a, a spanner wrench, but I do not. So, I'm down to a chisel and hammer. Well, it's nice and it is turning. It's better than what I thought it might be. Get a glove on, it's not a bad idea. And there it is. Now, if I remember right from my failed experience with the outriggers I rebuilt, I need to pull the shaft back. And now I need to hammer the gland in. You want to make sure you don't dean up against the shaft of the cylinder or the camera. You don't want to damage the uh, chrome finish on them. I do know you can get Cylinders will be chromed with a shop bound out of the way that does it, but I do not know what that cost. I'll drop my little hammer into the oil bucket. Okay, now I don't know how well you can see in here, but there is a Ring, it's like a snap ring of sorts inside here. I actually made this little pick when I did the last cylinders and kind of get right back in there behind that snap ring. And there it is. Man, there's all kinds of gunk in here. Okay. Now that we got 
fat pulled out. Now, supposedly, bear with me now, supposedly, this uh, shaft should slide out with the gland and everything else. So, uh, let me move you guys out of the way, and uh, we'll try to get it pulled out. If I remember right, on the outriggers, we use a little Kubota tractor. We uh, chain to the end of the cylinder here, and uh, we just use it to roll the bucket back to slowly pull it out. It worked really well, and I had the mobility loader sitting here. I could use it if I need to. Okay, I was just talking to the camera, saying how easy this is pulling out, and then I heard the camera beep and turn off, which means I was not recording. So, uh, sorry about that. You guys missed a little bit. Anyway, I have my oil bucket in place down here. Um, I was just pulling on the end of the shaft by hand. You can kind of get it pushed in and then pull it out and kind of get a ram at it. Kind of reverse hammer. And it is just sliding right out. So, hey, that's good. I thought I might have to tie onto the loader to get it pulled out. So, now that I know the camera is filming, I'm going to go ahead and set you guys back down here. Get you adjusted. And I will continue pulling this out. Couple taps with the hammer. And that'll help it come out. And we are about there. And there it is. Okay, see what it looks like here inside. So we can get light up here. It really doesn't look bad inside. I don't see no scratches or any damage or anything. So I guess we're all uh, put new seals on it and hope for the best. Okay, now here's the cylinder shaft. I got a light here because it's starting to get dark. So I'm going to have to go call a friend and see if we can't uh, borrow his one inch impact and uh, get that nut off there. These cylinders, they're just ridiculously tight. And uh, we'll also probably borrow a torque wrench from him. He has a torque wrench, like four foot long. So it should be able to torque it back to what it should be. Anyway, that's so I'm probably going to cut scenes here to the next day. I don't know if I'm going to get any filming down at the friend's house. It's always a little weird filming stuff. I don't know if they would want it to or not. But either way, if I film it, you'll see it. If I don't, you won't. So, I'll see you tomorrow. Tomorrow. Okay, we're here the next day. And it's terribly windy, so I'm hoping I have decent audio here for you. Uh, we already got this hauled in to the friend's shop. And used the one-inch impact. And got that loose. So, uh, I also have my seals sitting here, and um, I guess I'm going to go ahead and start pulling this stuff apart. And um, I get a tripod set up here with the camera, and we'll see if we can't get this rebuilt.
Okay, so it got pulled apart here. And there's a snap ring here inside. And I'll just get this pulled out. Unless it's stuck. It is okay got this all taken apart and I was trying to lay out my seals here in the same way they were in the uh, gland here because I want to make sure I get everything put back together correctly and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and start cleaning all this stuff up it has a lot of build up grease and gunk here and so I'm gonna go ahead and get all this shined up and we'll get it put back together. We got everything uh, cleaned up here pretty decent. I just used uh, paper towels, wiped all the oil off and um, used a wire brush and stuff like that on these uh, threads getting cleaned up. These threads always have a lot of uh, grease build up and some rust and stuff on them. So that's a good idea to get those cleaned out. So I guess I'm going to go ahead and start stacking my seals in. Now on these seals here, now they talked about in my book, they said if you don't have a uh, ring compressor for like an engine, you can put these seals in backwards because uh, they have a, they're called a V seal. And uh, they're supposed to press into the cylinder going this direction here. But you're kind of going against the grain. If you don't have something to compress them, they say you can flip them. And they're going easier this direction. However, they said they will, it will ruin the rings, or it will ruin your seals if you have to take the cylinder back apart. So um, I don't have a ring compressor. And I'm hoping to never have these cylinders apart again. So I'm going to go ahead and put these on backwards so they uh, should slide in easier. And these seals are a little bit tight going on, but that's always a good thing if they're tight. I'm going to use this old seal and uh, drive this new one in with it.
Okay, all these seals here are in, and I'm needing to get them pressed down further because there's a groove here that the snapping goes in. And uh, as you can see, the that one covers the groove up. Um, I did compare the uh, seals, the new seals here to the old ones. They're all the same thickness. I just need to get them uh, packed down in there. So I'm thinking I might go ahead and try to get the snapper in and maybe I can get the snapper in pressed down and then it'll click into place when I tap on it here. And you can see the, oh, the snap rings already starting to go down that groove. So I just need to walk my way around it and uh, get pressed in. Okay, I got that snap ring most of the way in. And uh, this seal here I'm hitting on is not really cutting it. So uh, I'm just lightly going to tap on this here with a punch and uh, hopefully get the seat down. I'm hitting against the snap ring so it won't damage any seals or anything. So close. Okay, that took quite a bit of tapping, but I did get this uh, seated down, and uh, now I just need to go ahead and put on my last two ovens here. Oh, this here goes on first. Okay, I believe we are now ready to go back together. So, we have the oven put in here, and uh, all of the seals are all in place, and I think we should be ready to slide it all back together and get the nut tightened back down. Okay, so this is ready to go into the shaft. Uh, you want to make sure you do not forget this uh, ring here. Make sure that goes on first. Uh, so I won't forget, I went ahead and screwed it on here. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and take some white lifting grease and put it here on the inside of the seals to uh, hopefully make them slide on easier. And now the fun part. I'll see if I can't get this driven onto here okay so I got the uh, gland put on and uh, I wasn't paying attention and the camera was pointing off in the wrong direction and I did not get on camera so I apologize for that but uh, it's really pretty uh, straightforward and um, you want to just go easy I grease up the seals and uh, I just use my little brass hammer here Put it against it, just use a bigger hammer to hit against it. So, um, just go slow and easy, and uh, it'll get on it eventually. So, I'm gonna go ahead and I guess get this put on here. Actually, I mean goes on without damaging it. Start 
they push the oven inside there. And as I said earlier, I put these seals here on backwards. Hoping it's going to slide together easier. I don't know if it will or not, but I hope it does. Okay, and that should be it. I should be ready to uh, tighten this nut on. And then to tighten the nut on, I went and borrowed this right here because I do not have any vein big enough for, for this kind of stuff. And uh, this is a three quarter inch drive. And uh, this should be enough to uh, get this put back on. That's gotta be it. Okay, we got the nut tightened down on the end of the shaft. And now we're gonna go ahead and we need to, uh, I don't know if you can see you now, too well or not. But uh, where that snap ring or that wire goes to hold everything in, it can cause a uh, wire edge on this outside. And uh, so we're going to get some files, make some sandpaper, and clean this edge up here so hopefully it doesn't shave off our uh, new seals. So uh, we're going to go ahead and walk on that a little bit. We got some rags, some paper towels shoved back in there to keep in the... Uh, dust and everything out of it so uh, we should be good there That's it. Okay, that cylinder went way easier than what the outriggers were, and uh, we had no problems with it at all. Uh, we went ahead and rebuilt the other tilt cylinder, and we didn't film any of it, but it's just the same process. And man, did we have a horrible time with it, because it was all so terribly rusted, and um, it took us forever to get that gland hammered back into the cylinder. We beat on it for probably over three hours until we finally got it back enough. And uh, it just has a lot of rust and stuff just on the end of it. The inside of the cylinder, it looks great, no rust at all, but it's just that end that's on there. And uh, we had a horrible time with it. And we ended up having to pull the cylinder shaft out with the uh, mobility loader. And uh, we actually had this whole Backhoe with the bucket on the ground, the backhoe on the ground, and everything. We had the whole backhoe rolling forward before that cylinder shaft popped out the cylinder. So uh, it was terribly tight, and the other cylinder was way, way easier. So I'm so glad I filmed that one instead. And that's probably going to do it here for right now. Uh, be sure to subscribe, like, comment down below, like you guys have to say. Uh, should I be having a lot of videos coming out on this backhoe? 
and uh, doing some work with it and uh, finally getting it used. So uh, be sure to uh, check out the videos that are going to be coming out. And if you haven't seen the videos on the engine rebuild on this machine, they'll be called up here at the top corner of your screen. Uh, go check out that playlist of uh, the whole uh, engine rebuild process. And I appreciate you guys watching, and I'll see you next week.